Hey there, and yeah, apologies for like the late uh, She-Hulk episode 1 review, but it's been a hell of a week, and I did want to put some effort into this video, because honestly, after watching this first episode, the question, you know, going into She-Hulk was, was, you know, I expected this to be bad, and was it bad? You know, was it as bad as I expected? Honestly, it wasn't. You know why? Because it was that much fucking worse. And here we go. Go. And I did want to add some clips and stuff and make some points and everything and just put some effort into this video. In fact, put some more effort than anybody who actually wrote the script or directed or did cinematography or the god awful fucking CGI or acting or just anything involved with this bullshit episode. And yeah, spoilers, I'm going to spoil it and it's already been out a week and who gives a shit, right? But let me start off at least with some green and I'm getting some green Skittles going on here because Skittles is good for you, right? Cancer. But that and some jack apple because uh i'm trying to do this at 5 a.m before work and it's going to take me some time to edit this but yeah why not do some green jack apple and green skittles before i talk about how friggin bad this episode was and uh yeah boy so um there's so much to talk about i'm not going to do an hour-long video i'm also not going to do a five-minute video because i got to make a lot of points and just you know I, I, man it's like wh where, where to start let me just stop stuttering and get a point across and just uh well Enjoy the intro. Wow, that's some good Jack Apple and Skittles. Okay, so um, let me say, off the bat before I go into this, as somebody who's been reading She-Hulk for a very long time, and I haven't had time to pull up all my back issues, but to say the least, even with the Marvel Unlimited app, I recently went back and read episode one, or episode one, issue one of She-Hulk, which came out in 1980. The first issue where Bruce saved his cousin's life and gave her a blood transfusion. So, what's going on with this episode? Why is it so goddamn terrible? Why does half the internet hate it for? Let me explain. Okay, now, I'm going to use some trailer footage as always. If you've seen the trailer, off the bat, while well, Jen, she is She-Hulk, and she talks into the camera, breaking the fourth wall, as she's done before in the comics, and she's talking about, okay, well, I'm She-Hulk, my cousin knows this, my best friend knows this, let me explain to you what happened. Now, she's driving in her car, and Bruce is back in a human form. You're asking yourself, why the hell is Bruce in a human form? What's going on? I'm not too mad at the concept of that, because he has this magical bullshit bracelet, and, well, Bruce is a genius, so I can't get mad about him finding a way to turn himself back into Banner, at least for a little bit of the episode. Now, Jen is doing her whole, like, they're trying to make this a comedy, and spoilers, I didn't laugh once during this episode, except for one time, which... I'll get into it later. It wasn't a joke while I laughed, but this is supposed to be a comedy, and at 38 minutes, I'm not fucking laughing at all. So, um, you know, Jen is trying to, uh, for some reason, she's obsessed with the fact that Steve Rogers was apparently a virgin, you know, and automatically she's getting stuff wrong because... He's rushed to the front lines, he becomes a war hero, then he is frozen in ice. I mean, why have the writers or anybody do some actual homework and watch some previous MCU films? Because, you know... This is coming from the same studio and same place that people wrote an entire season of Obi-Wan Kenobi and never watched a single prequel. But, okay. So, she gets this shit wrong with Steve Rogers. Immediately, he was sent off into the front lines. No, actually, he wasn't if you watched the first film. Once Steve got the super soldier formula and became Captain America, he was used as a figurehead and a way to boost morale. In fact, he wanted to go out on missions. They wouldn't let him. And then he, you know, he went out and snuck away and did his first mission. Then we get to see a montage. That's called a montage. Regardless of the fact that Jennifer is so obsessed with Steve Rogers being a virgin because it's a big joke and okay, whatever. Repeating everything that I've already told you about my friend and colleague. Obviously, Captain America was a virgin. Okay. Now, Jen can't drive because, you know, shocker, women can't drive. And yeah, I'm going to be very sarcastic since they're so anti fucking man stuff on this episode. And, you know, we get it. It's a joke, right? Anti man this, anti man that. All right, so. I'll, I'll start using stereotypes myself. Ooh, and now I'm thinking in stereotypes. And being that I have three younger sisters and a cousin and a mother and women in my life, they'll laugh at these jokes because they can actually take a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Okay, so Jen can't drive, gets into a car accident. Because Bruce now had his, this magical bullshit bracelet on, he's in human form. He can be hurt. So Jennifer has to pull Bruce out of the wreck because God forbid Bruce would save his own cousin, right? I'm not sure at all why change her origin story. Why change the fact that she was dying, she was shot, and her cousin did some self-sacrifice and saved his cousin's life 
give her blood transfusion. But you know, it's 2022, we can't have that ever. Okay, so Jen pulls her cousin out of the wreck and her arm is cut. Bruce's arm, he's cut as well because he's still in human form. But now his magical bullshit bracelet is starting to break and, and Bruce is slowly starting to hulk out. But before that happens, He's bleeding. Some of his blood drops into Jen's open wound. So, okay, now she um, has blood from Bruce inside of her. I mean, of course, it's as much blood as a blood transfusion, right? Not even close. So now Jen does her first Hulk out and she blacks out. Next, she wakes up inside of a bar. She looks all messed up and everything. And some random females, for some reason, instead of helping or cleaning her up, they want to put makeup on her and give her some different shoes and... I guess it's just normal to see a girl in a bar who's kind of you know, torn up looking to just put random makeup on her and okay, whatever. This upcoming scene, I guess, is just a whole typical female at a bar, guys hitting on her and okay, they are not insulting her, they are not attacking her, they're just simply asking her questions. But Jen, because she's so good at controlling her anger, she hulks out real quick and she's about to grab one of them and then Bruce, because now Bruce lost his magical bullshit device. He's in Professor Hulk or Smart Hulk form. He tackles her to the ground. And of course, Jennifer, you know, she's so good at controlling her anger. Had she actually hit one of these guys, she would have murdered them. But, you know, again, I've I read comments the past week where if she did murder one of these guys, they had it coming because just talking and saying stupid shit, you know, apparently for some people deserves a woman killing you. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. So now she wakes up and Bruce is, okay, in Professor Hulk form. And he's talking about, hey, all of a sudden, Jen's like, Bruce, I noticed that your arm is healed. Yeah, Jen, my arm wasn't fully healed after Endgame. After, you know, I saved half the universe and brought half the universe back. And, you know, you're welcome. But uh, apparently now going forward with this, I've been saying this for years and years and years now. I'm not expecting the Hulk and Thor and some characters to be as strong as their comic book counterpart. I get it. The Hulk in the comics is a is a literal walking god. His healing factor is insane, and there's endless TikTok videos and YouTube videos, and I'm not going to break it down, but how awesome the Hulk's healing factor is. His healing factor is even higher than Wolverine's. I'm not expecting MCU Hulk to be that powerful. However, what I'm expecting is him not to be so fucking useless. His arm was torn up after Endgame, and the damage was permanent, according to Kevin Foggy. But okay, now miraculously, now Hulk, Bruce, his uh, friggin' arm is healed. How did this happen? Oh, because Jennifer, he, he analyzed her blood, and he used her blood to heal his arm. And off the bat, bullshit. Bullshit. And she even makes a running joke where she's like, wait a second, so you used my blood to heal your arm? He goes, yeah. She goes, well, so that means my blood is better than yours? And he goes, well, different. And she's like, well, no, sounds like it's better. Because, of course... Why wouldn't Jennifer's blood be better than Bruce's? She was doing so much better. So now Bruce has to take her blood and destroy it because he doesn't want this blood getting out there. He does explain to Jennifer scientifically the fact that, well, why didn't you die for it? Because he said you had a lethal dose of gamma blood inside of you. And she's freaking out like, okay, I should be dead. No, because you're my cousin. We, sit, we share different genetic traits. The way we fucking make gamma and stuff, it didn't kill you. But okay, so now... He has to explain to her the fact that, well, you're a Hulk now. I want to go back to having a normal life. You can't have a normal life. You're a Hulk. This is impossible. And I don't think you have thought through how dangerous this level of power is. He's trying to coach her to the fact that I've been dealing with this shit for the better part of 15 years. You should know what I've been through. And you can't just go back to being Jennifer, attorney at law. There's rules and stuff. There's training. I have to show you what it's like having this ability and having these powers. So he wants to keep her on this island. He goes, it may take years and years, but this is the way it's got to be. Now, during the course, course of the episode, they try for comedy purposes. As you've seen in the trailer, Bruce, like, you know, using a foghorn, waking her up, testing her abilities, seeing how strong she is, seeing how much she can control it. During the course of the episode, he comes to find out that when Jennifer transforms, unlike Bruce, she doesn't lose her consciousness. She doesn't lose her personality. Bruce has been struggling, you know, with the curse of the Hulk. With that, he becomes Bruce, then he turns into the Hulk. Two different personalities. The appeal for Jen, even since like the very first issue, is when she transforms, she maintains her Jen persona. And for a huge chunk of the comic runs, Jen was stuck as always being She Hulk. In fact, when I got into She Hulk, because it literally came out before I was born, so when I was reading the comic books and watching the TV shows and the like, she was always in She Hulk form. You're stuck like this forever. Coming up is this one scene, and I'm going to show this. There has been TikTok videos. I've seen this. In fact, even my own sisters show me, show me these TikTok videos, and my cousins as well. They just, they look at this stuff, and uh, the past week, this one video, there's been entire YouTube videos that have been made just on this scene alone. 
I'm not going to do a big 10 minute breakdown, but just show just how much, how insufferable, how insulting, how fucking stupid this clip is. And enjoy it. Here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street. Oh, my poor baby. When incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day. You are a lying liar! Because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. <laughs> I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, so let me break this down and put this glass down. I'm not even going to go the, with the whole male, anti-female, you know, freaking arc on this. Just going from Jennifer Walters talking to Bruce Banner, her cousin. Okay, Jen, so what you're saying is that because you get catcalled, which is, what is catcalling? It's random guys giving you compliments. Yeah, I know it sucks the fact that just imagine being good looking and walking down the street and random strangers just saying you're good looking and they want to sleep with you. I wouldn't know that personally, but okay. The world's smallest violin. <laughs> the struggles of a modern 2022 single white female. Also, men at your job are incompetent in telling you how to do your job. Okay, fair enough. Sometimes guys think they're better than you and they think that, you know, some women are idiots. But the last part is I can literally be murdered in <laughs> one second. <laughs> This may and may very thinly apply to a normal person, okay? Maybe a normal guy who's just work, working a nine-to-five desk job and didn't deal with different hardships and stuff. No one is dismissing you may have some hardships out there. But in the context of this show, in the premise of this scene, you are talking to your cousin, Bruce Banner, who is literally the fucking Incredible Hulk. And my God, I'm, I've made Facebook posts to piss people off, and I'm going to do it here. So off the bat, let's see. The Edward Norton Hulk is actually canon because, well, we do get the Abomination by Tim Roth, and we did have uh, Thunderbolt Ross, which was played by the late William Hurt, God bless, but he uh, passed away, and that's considered canon. So just that movie alone, the entire film is, oh boy, the government is trying to hunt Bruce. In fact, they're trying to kill Bruce. In fact, even Ross... He wants to kidnap Bruce and use his power against him. We have Betty, which is by Liv Tyler. Have you seen Betty so far in the MCU? No, you haven't. And did she die? Did they break up? You know, is, is she something else? Nobody fucking knows. During the course of that film, Bruce can't even get excited because they showed that. So the poor guy can't even fucking get laid. But okay, so that's the Edward Norton Hulk. There's a deleted scene I'm going to talk about in a second, but this actually gets referenced in the first Avengers film by Mark Ruffalo. So, all right, Jennifer, let's break this down again some more. Every time you get mad, bad things happen. You get called mean names. All right, Bruce, every waking second of Bruce's life, if he gets pissed off, if he doesn't control his anger, he turns into a eight foot tall, 2000 pound fucking rage monster that can destroy cities, that the media labels him a fucking monster. The government is hunting him. People are terrified of him. Because now it's break down when we see Mark Ruffalo for the first time in the first Avengers film. His first interaction on screen is with Natasha Black Widow. At this point, Black Widow is a beast. She's an operative. She's not scared of anybody or anything. She says the fact that Bruce, well, I've, co I've come to this situation one-on-one. -on -one. There's no guards around me, which later on we learn that is bullshit, right? But she's so terrified of Bruce that when Bruce slaps his hands on the fucking table, she freaks out and pulls out a fucking gun. And then she also calls him back up with like 30 guys around her. And Bruce is like, yeah, but you came by yourself, right? She's terrified of the Hulk, and she should be. Later on during the film, they mention, okay, Bruce is holding the scepter. You guys, you know, if you actually watch the first Avengers film, and again, I wouldn't expect any fucking writers to watch the MCU and do their homework. But all right, now Bruce is talking about, yeah, you know, you guys, this prison, the one that Loki's in, you made it to kill me. And they did, because even S.H.I.E.L.D. is that terrified of the Hulk. And, you know, friggin' Bruce gives this wonderful speech about... I didn't see an end, so I put a bullet in my mouth, and the other guy spit it out. That's the Edward Norton film, which is a deleted scene. You can look it up. But regardless of the fact that Bruce has been trying to cure himself of the Hulk, because in Bruce's life, the Hulk is a curse. He doesn't want it. He's trying to get rid of it. One day, 
I'm going to find a cure. Now, during this scene, he's holding Loki's scepter. Everybody, Nick Fury is getting friggin' tense. Thor, Thor is an actual Asgardian god. Thor is getting ready. Captain America, Tony Stark is afraid of him. I am so damn scared. But you know what, Jennifer? You're right. You're right. I mean, the guy was trying to kill himself, and he li literally can't kill himself. But you know, you being catcalled is a way bigger deal. And bullshit. Bullshit. He mentions during the, during the course of this episode situations that happen like okay i was knocked out by a robot going to age of ultron all right wanda being the superhero that she is and the great person that wanda is hypnotizes bruce into turning into the hulk and everybody's seen it if well if you actually watch stuff and watch age of ultron tony has to do the hulkbuster armor and try to slow bruce down slow down the hulk and just contain him during the sequence in africa who, who knows how many fucking innocent civilians were murdered nobody knows but again not a big deal because remember remember you know jennifer whenever you know, you get angry, you're talked to by incompetent men. When Bruce gets angry, innocent civilians die. Now, to the point that Bruce, you know, during this movie, you watch him, he feels like shit, he feels guilty, as he should. At the end of the film, he exiles himself inside of a Quinjet, and then we don't see him for a while. He wakes up in Thor Ragnarok. Two years, over two years has gone by. In fact, he even mentions this to Jennifer inside the episode. So now he's been the Hulk for two years, wakes up on a fucking alien planet and has no idea where he is and immediately is used yet again into a conflict with with um thor into ragnarok so of course jen you've had it more rough than this poor guy who just imagine blacking out and waking up two years later not a big deal right so the events of thor ragnarok happen then we get into infinity war and well people who watch infinity war big old fucking thanos drops the hulk with his bare hands in a course of 25 fucking 30 seconds and During the course of the entire film of Infinity War, Bruce needs the Hulk yet again, but the Hulk doesn't want to come out, and, well, the rest is history. So, just to summarize this, the fact that Bruce, every waking second of his life, he has to contain his anger, contain his rage, and not freak out. Because when he does, people fucking die, alright? But when you freak out, you get called mean names. And, um, yeah. Go fuck yourself. So let me just say the fact that Jennifer Walters as a character, she's been a fan favorite. People have loved her. Jennifer is smart. She's charismatic. She's confident as She-Hulk. And she also loves her cousin. She understands what the fact, the things he's been through, what's happened in his life. This doesn't come off as somebody who actually knows Jennifer Walters, who's read her comics and understands the fact that, well, just basic human decency. The way she's talking to fucking Bruce is belittling everything he's been through. Not to the point where my, hey cousin, I'm sorry what you've been through. I'm sorry what you sacrificed. In fact, thank you so much for sitting there and tearing apart your entire fucking arm and snapping your fingers and bringing back half the universe. You're welcome, right? This comes across as making Jennifer as a, you know, freaking uh, protagonist, as a main character. Instead of being somebody we want to root for, instead of somebody who is a feminist icon, instead of somebody I want my sisters to be like and, you know, have um, female empowerment. It comes across as somebody who is a, let's see, narcissistic, egotistical, unempathetic, and just whiny, entitled fucking bitch. I have no soul to burn. It's a massive insult to everything that the Hulk has been through, and to me, it's a massive insult to Jennifer Walters as a character. But, okay. Now, we're not even fucking done, but that's my five-minute rant on this one bullshit scene. Let's move the fuck on. Let us move on. So now Jennifer has mastered her freaking powers, because of course she has. And going forward, Bruce is not condescending Jen. He's not trying to shit on Jen. He's trying to coach his cousin to the fact that, okay, you've had these powers for all of like, you know, 24, 24, five hours and shit. But of course, you've mastered this way better than me. I mean, again, I've only been doing this for like, you know, a decade and a half and shit. No, I'm better than you, you know. Up comes the whole Jeep scene. And goddamn, I've seen so many videos on this. Go back and watch the first Avengers when it's like, hey, Bruce, you know, we need your uh, expertise as the Hulk. And you know what, Cap? The thing is, I'm always angry. And with one fucking fist, drops this massive ass Leviathan creature, goes back a couple feet. And I understand the fact that Bruce is not going to deck a friggin' Jeep and destroy the whole thing in this one, but the physics alone of Jennifer running Bruce over with a Jeep is so mind boggly fucking stupid that, you know what? Have a drink. Have a drink. They get into this big cousin, uh, you know, friggin' sibling squabble. It's, you know, finally for the first time since the Edward Norton film, it's been over. God, 13 years now, we get to see the infamous signature move of the Hulk clap. And the Hulk does his friggin' clap and just does it to knock Jennifer back. 
doesn't hurt her because now she's in Hulk form. And of course, she can't mimic the Hulk clap off the bat, which I'm like, wow, Jennifer, for the first time, doesn't get everything right and perfect and holy shit, right? Holy shit. She does a lesser version of the Hulk clap and she does it slowly and kind of makes a sonic wave. And of course, Bruce is on his knees, he's being hurt, and of course his cousin is doing such a good job at just hurting him. They get into this whole big wrestling squabble, and now Bruce's bar gets broken, so they have to freaking break his bar, since the most important part of this episode is the fact that, as Hulks, we metabolize alcohol more than normal people, so we can constantly drink and drink and drink and not get drunk. Have a buzz, but not get drunk. And I could say one thing, life of drinking and not getting drunk fucking sucks. Life is pain. Life is only pain. Now in the end, they say their goodbyes. Jennifer has mastered this fucking power way faster than Bruce ever could, and she goes back to her life as a lawyer. And we get to see finally this courtroom scene, which, oh god, I'm going to show this as well. There's one mini kind of 30 second fight scene with Jennifer and this uh, weird main character bad guy, and probably the worst editing I've seen in a very long time. And she does this one flying kick to Jennifer as She Hulk that is so embarrassingly fucking bad. My god, it's it's hard to watch. And that's it. That's the episode. It's over. Jennifer transforms back into human form, puts on her shoes, and awesome. But, oh wait, there's more. Stop it. Stop it. Please stop. There's a post credit scene, and just, yeah, Jennifer keeps talking about crying. I can't believe Steve Rogers died, and he was a virgin, and how could Captain America with that beautiful ass, because we're, we're you know, we're so against objectifying women. We can't talk about women's appearance and stuff, and how, how beautiful women are. It's too insulting, but it's awesome to talk about Steve Rogers and his great american ass which let's be honest that is america's ass it's your look tony it's ridiculous i think you look great cap as far as i'm concerned that's america's ass and now bruce has a divulge information which no one ever talked about before nobody ever cared about before but apparently yeah during his tour steve finally got some action but you know jennifer saying that oh my god steve rogers died because yes everyone knew at the end of endgame when steve took Thor's hammer and brought it back and came back as an old man and handed off the shield to Falcon. He ended up with, you know, in a different timeline, the love of his life, Peggy Carter, and lived with her for 50, 60 fucking years. And so I guess out of a 50 and 60 year marriage, they just never had kids or did anything. So yeah, he died a virgin as an old man. And wow, what bullshit. Bullshit. I've shown clips of this show to my sisters, my mother, and my cousin. And you know what? Three, well, sorry, four out of five of them have watched every film in the MCU. Every one of them is like, Chris, I hate this fucking show already. I'm not watching this show. And guess what? Your target audience? Wow, they hate it. Who's your target audience? I have no fucking idea. But for the most part, if you actually read comics and stuff and look at comic sales and viewership, especially with the MCU and just movies in general, well, guess what? Guys, assholes like me, toxic people like me, we're your fucking target audience. This is why stuff like The New Charlie's Angels came out. It fucking bombed. Ghostbusters 2016, it fucking bombed. The Harley Quinn movie, it bombed. Plenty of guys loved reading She-Hulk. Plenty of women loved reading She-Hulk. In fact, if any character I would tell my, my sisters or my ex-girlfriends or anybody in my life to get into, I would say, you know what then? Pick up a She-Hulk comic. She-Hulk, as a premise, is a fantastic character. Right, we all love her. But I am sorry to anybody subscribing to me, the fact that it took me an entire week to break down this shitty episode. And uh, yeah, this episode, it was fucking terrible. And I thank God I will never, ever watch it again. No, never again. You guys know the spiel. You know what's about to happen. And give me one second while I just finish my green Hulk, uh, She-Hulk, whatever, lager and whatever. This calls for a drink. That is some good Skittles and Jack Apple. And as always, I'm heading back to work.